It's Jason again, and I'm going to be walking you guys through the process of now smoothing out our key poses. All right, so let's just take a walk through again through our um, how we've got, we've not necessarily the layers themselves, but rather how we set up the uh, the keyframes in this particular file. All right, so you'll see that I have my initial block pose. Right, so I've got my T pose going on, and then I've duplicated those poses. All right. Now, the reason why I've duplicated these layers is that you might find that, for example, when we want to move um, the position of our uh, God controller, for example, so our character controller, we will need to create the correct amount of easing. So I've just set these up so that you don't have to make blank keyframes and carry on. You can kind of just drag them over to where the actual motion is going to begin, regardless of where that is, and then you can apply easing from there. Right, so that just means now that um, we've always got those keyframes to kind of make sure that we start at the beginning where we need to, and we can always then revert back to our initial keyframes should we get completely lost or turned around. Okay, so the process behind this is fairly simple. Um, well, it might look overwhelming at the moment, but the thought process behind it is simple. Right, so if we thought sort of like tried to move everything at once, like progress. Um, straight down the line, it would be perhaps a little overwhelming for this phase. So what I would recommend doing, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to focus on the easing between the first pose, so getting from our resting position to our first blocked out keyframe. Um, and then, so I'm just gonna move a couple of keyframes down the line and then I'll hit N, N for NATO, uh, just to sort of end that slice of animation. So now I can work on my easing in this particular slice and then I can move on to the next one, on to the next one. Um, and then I can shift my layers or my, my keyframes rather up and down so that we can create a nice overlapping or secondary action as well. All right, so let's start off. Um, to begin with, I'm just going to have um, sort of like choose a sort of point to begin with. All right, so I'm just gonna go for this arm over here because the layers are sort of like like almost right on top. Uh, and I've got my controller selected. All right, so the first thing I can do is I can select these, uh, simply hit F9 to apply easing, um, and then sort of just scrub through and see how uh, we're now going to progress from one point to the next. Okay, so I'm focusing entirely on this arm, right? So all of my red layers for now. And anywhere that we want our um, animation to begin at this point, all right? So anywhere that we have keyframes that are lying outside of that point, but affect keys inside of this particular slice that we are working in, we're going to shift up to the beginning of that timeline, all right? So the beginning of our work area, all right? And then apply using there. I can grab these and this is kind of the first step that we want to take. Just make sure that we don't miss out on any of the assets that we're using. Let's not forget our character controller as well because that's going to cause our character to slide into position. Um, and we're just going to identify moving down the line all these keyframes that need to be shifted up and we're going to remember to apply easing to them. All right. So this application of um, applying easing is going to make life uh, once we start actually smoothing a little bit, be, uh, sort of easier, <laughs> pun intended. Um, and that's going to allow us to also, once we start watching our playback, um, identify areas that we may have forgotten or that need to be tweaked, right? Because if they have been forgotten, they're going to sort of snap into place as the toggle hold sort of tells it to. Um, and uh, when we scrub through as well, we can also then keep an eye for perhaps any uh, elements that um, need to be tweaked in such a way that they don't um, sort of break our entire model, all right, or the sort of the limb chain structure or the system. Uh, okay, so you'll see that I'm kind of passing over the keyframes that fall outside of my chunk, uh, and I will have to go and, and sort of deal with them at some point, but for now I'm going to focus within this particular slice of animation. So if I play this back, you'll see that now my um, character is easing into this position, but there's a couple of things that I want to adjust about it. So if I sort of just scrub through frame by frame, the first thing that I notice is that this elbow, even though we want it to sort of be bent outwards at the end of the keyframe, 
I don't necessarily want to move my arm at that angle. So I can simply then grab that. You'll notice then that um, I'm going to sort of create my keyframe right here in between the two others. And I'm just going to shift it down so that it's still kind of bent. All right, and I can do the same with my shoulder controller. Um, so let's grab a hold of that. Um, and that needs a, a key pose here. So let's shift that out there. Uh, apply easing to that. And then, oops, not that, sorry. Fat fingers, small keyboard. <laughs> Same mistake again. Uh, okay, so pretty much over there. I'm also just gonna push that back uh, into the torso so it kind of makes sense. All right, and then this obviously then necessitates that we add some more rotation to our wrist so that it is uh, affected correctly. And then as I scrub through, you'll see that my elbow now bends out as he reaches his final position. All right, so let's take a look then for anything else that we might have missed. Um, our head moves into place and you'll see that our foot is kind of doing something a little bit strange uh, over here. So let's take a look at what our next key pose is before we label it as broken. Okay, so this is what we want to sort of move on to then, uh, where we have our back leg kind of bent and we have this foot rotating out correctly. All right, so we've got our left guard control over here. Let's hit N for NATO again to include this into our slice of animation. And let's see how we can go about fixing that up. Okay, so my character gets to this point. Um, I might then just adjust the rotation of my guard controller to keep his foot flat on the ground for now. And then as it moves back into that position, we are then going to have that um, rotation make sense. Okay, so this is where, for example, we need to grab our um, like left foot for the toes. So that's layer 46. Uh, let's also shift up the start of uh, layer 48. Apply easing to those. We might as well apply easing to all of them that fall within this block as well. Um, now that we've moved on to the next slice of our animation. Okay, um, so it is just moving piece by piece and it does start making a lot more sense um, once we dive a little further into it and get used to the project file. All right, uh, so we can shift this one up, shift this one up and apply easing to those. And uh, we can grab this one, shift it up, shift it up, shift it up. Okay, um, cool. I'm sure that this is a riveting watch for you guys. I can only imagine how exciting it is. Uh, okay. Let's try and play that back and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got our character kind of leaning into it at this point. Um, and this is going to be where my character kind of pushes against the immovable object in my particular example, and then slips backwards as he sort of tries to maintain or like push that weight even further. Okay, so we've got this cool little uh, torso movement going on, uh, and I believe that that is being controlled by this one over here. Yep, go back, apply easing. Um, so it really is that simple. Uh, identify something that looks wrong. So my pelvis, for example, needs some work now as well. Uh, and then just deal with that one step at a time. Okay, you see that we've got a little bit of a, um, a height difference going on, but we can try and adjust that in a moment as well. All right, so let's grab our uh, pelvis, let's grab its rotation, let's apply easing to that and see how that already helps. Okay, and I can also adjust its position slightly. Um, maybe it's not gonna move as high, so let's apply easing to the frame, and then let's push this slightly up as well. Okay, so that's already looking a lot better. Um, we can definitely tweak the head a little bit more. So let's get this into position over here. Um, and we can also grab the bottom of the head, right? So the bottom of the head is what is causing this 
piece of the sort of collar to stick out. So I can then just adjust its position like so. I'm just holding down shift and using my arrow keys. And then as I shift forward, if uh, my collar sort of sticks out again, I can then always adjust again, either this bottom um, sort of key to suck it back in, or I can adjust the middle of the head at this point and straighten out the head slightly, possibly move this top of the head as well. Okay, cool. So that's essentially my first step. You can see, for example, if I sort of zoom in onto the foot here, that it's not behaving as it should. Um, you'll see that it's sort of bending at the toes way too soon. All right, so let's find that layer, dark green over here. Uh, and it might not even necessarily be this particular element that is wrong. You might find that the controller's rotation, for example, is causing an issue. Um, but let's take a look quickly and see. Okay, so essentially this is happening now because my keyframe starts so soon. So I could either shift it up or I could fix it with the timing. All right, once we jump into the graph editor. But that seems to have done the trick. Um, my foot is just kind of slipping. And the reason for that is if I... Let me zoom in here and just change the color so we can see it a little bit better. Um, so the reason why it's slipping is it's following that little curve in the arc. All right, so we remember that hidden under the pen tool, we have the convert vertex tool. So I just want to click on that to get rid of that. And that's going to make sure that my foot then doesn't slide too far. All right, and you can see it's doing something weird there as it moves on to the next pose. All right, so that is then our next point of call. Uh, let's shift down to the next couple of frames. You'll see that my character, uh, my legs have actually swapped. So if you pay attention, my pink leg, my uh, le right leg, sorry, character's left leg is at the front um, and then it's at the back. All right, so I wanna give the idea that this foot has slid all the way back and then my left leg is going to step up and come into this power pose over here. All right, so again, we'll hit N for NATO just to add these keyframes to the entire process. Um, and then we can start identifying keys that are still being told not to move. Let's apply easing to those. Um, and we can grab these as well. And again, anything that now falls within our workspace, we are going to treat as an active keyframe uh, and we are going to adjust it accordingly. So I can probably grab that one as well. Uh, grab these. Um, and in class, I sort of recommended to you guys that we focus on doing one limb at a time. So limb, limb, limb. Uh, so let me actually like practice what I preach rather than applying, um, <laughs> just easing to all of it and walking you through from there. Cool. So we step into this position and then I need my character to slot in over here. All right. So my arms don't necessarily change. Let's take a look. Um, really only my green arm that changes. So let's quickly add our easing to that. I've identified it now, uh, F9, I've applied my easing, um, and we might then find that if I just quickly scrub through there, it's working a lot better, but we do need to then change our shoulder as well. So let's just quickly grab that so I can find where I'm working. Let's grab my shoulder and sort of at this point, right? So we had it move into position here. Um, and at this point, it is still sort of in the correct position. So I could either have the arm move further back in the process of this stretch, all right? So it moves further back, and then it's not going to clip outside the body when I get to this point, all right? Uh, so our shoulder's kind of looking like in the, the correct position here, and we can adjust it as necessary, all right? So I can maybe just add a little bit more bend to this elbow as well. Okay, and that's the, kind of like the power of having blocked out our key poses already, is that no matter what changes we do in between our initial keyframes, we'll always end up in the correct position. All right. Um, I would also recommend strongly that you guys save multiple files. Okay, so uh, if, for example, if I were to just quickly open up and save into my documents, for example, um, this could then be number one, number two, number three. And I would do that after every main slice of animation that I fix. So that if I do fuck up, then I can just jump back to a previous save and not have to restart from the very beginning. I'm sort of just jumping back one slice of animation per save. 
All right, hopefully that kind of makes sense. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is I want to fix this head because that's looking uh, fairly interesting. So my head layers are over here. Um, let's quickly apply these into those and see how that works out for us. So we start off in this position, he's pulling his head back uh, and then that little bump over there, I think can be attributed, let's quickly add these into these as well. Um, let's take a look. I think that dip is being attributed to, no, there we go. Okay, so that dip seems to have sort of disappeared now. Cool. So that head is kind of then still working. Okay, so then the next thing we can do is let's take a look at fixing up this torso. Um, well, the torso is actually kind of working, which is great. So now we can really just focus on the legs. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, okay, so let's then jump onto our legs and see what we can do with these. So I'm going to focus on my back leg first, um, just because then I can spend my time getting the step right on the next one without getting confused by anything. Okay, so we start off in this position. Let's scroll down to where we need to be. Uh, let's apply some easing over here. Okay, and immediately just break what our leg is doing. Um, and that's because we also then need to adjust our foot. So in this particular rig, uh, we remember that um, the foot controllers also determine the bend of the leg. So I'm just gonna select these, add easing to that. And then I'm also gonna bring this rotation up. And uh, let's add easing to that and see what it does exactly. So we start off with our foot sort of uh, flat at the very beginning. Uh, and I think I can move that keyframe pretty much up to here. All right, so yeah, still flat. And then we're going to be easing into that step uh, at the back there. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do, uh, my knee position has been eased. So let's get our hip and then I can shift that up over here. Uh, quickly apply some easing. Um, and I, again, only really want that hip to be affected from this point here. So it's gonna sort of move like so. And we then need to adjust our guard controller. So that's the power of having left these sort of extra keys for us to work with. Okay, so we've got that now. Uh, and then that leg seems to be working a little bit better. There is just this strange little height jump that's going on. And I think that might be attributed to, let's just quickly see what is causing that. The position of our hip seems to be causing that. So let's just quickly grab that. Uh, okay, and we can actually just copy this um, static keyframe and paste it here. Uh, and then add easing to that so that our hip kind of like slides into this position that it's currently in rather than just jumping into it. Okay, cool. Uh, so then scrubbing through it again, let's see, uh, we still have like a little bit of this jump going on. Um, so what it could also be is the fact that we've changed both the position of the guard controller and the hip. So I'm just gonna see why, I'm just gonna add a keyframe beforehand that has it in the correct position. Okay, and then I can adjust my knee uh, as well so that I don't have this little dip. Cool, there we go. So just some superfluous keyframes to help us move into this next position. Okay, uh, and then once I've got my step uh, for my other leg done, I can then just focus on um, adjusting the toes of these stepping legs. Okay, because you can see sort of slightly here that my toes aren't moving correctly. Okay, but the very next thing, we're going to now focus on our step here. Okay, so this is gonna require a little bit of finesse uh, and adjust, uh, adjustment of our actual keyframes. So the first thing we can do, let's shift this up over here and apply some easing there. So that's going to drag our hip across nicely with that. Well, it's gonna break everything. Uh, I'm just gonna add easing to these so that I don't see these random blockings. Okay, um, and then we need to grab the hip. Uh, so that's our hip controller. I wanna grab the actual hip itself. Uh, and just make sure that when I get into this final position, it isn't sort of sticking out of his ass. Let's go back to the very beginning. There we go. 
Okay, next up we can grab uh, the knee, but let's actually focus on the foot next because this is what's going to drive um, our, our step. And then we can adjust the knee and the hip according to that. Okay, um, so shifting forward about halfway, right? So it's gonna move here at some point and I can apply easing to that um, to help that transition. All right, and it could work as a simple foot slide, but we wanna try and get the actual step going. So again, I'm gonna move kind of between the two, right? And then I can always shift my keyframes up and down the timeline later. And I'm just gonna lift the foot off the ground. With that, I obviously need to then adjust where my knee is, all right? And then to make sure that our knee doesn't break uh, or look terrible, I then also need to do the hip. All right, so we're just adding a couple of keyframes here that are going to help sell the idea uh, of what it is that we're sort of depicting. Okay, we can then also adjust the rotation of our foot because our feet rotate obviously while we're stepping or in, in the most cases they do at least. Uh, we can do that over there. And ba -ba -bum, we sort of then come down into that step. So I, then I could like rotate it as it's coming further down. Uh, I could add some more rotation to this particular step, like so, so it looks as though he's actually sort of gonna roll down onto that heel. There we go. Okay, uh, and then we can just try and adjust like the actual position of like the hip controller for this leg. So let's grab this and let's bring this slightly higher into the pelvis and then adjust our knee as necessary. Okay, and then to make this slightly more believable, I can also adjust the timing on this leg. All right, so let's straighten our leg at this point. It helps sell the idea of a correct movement of like how a leg would actually move. And we can then adjust where our hip is sitting. Maybe we can bend this knee a little bit more then. And we if can adjust that, where this foot know. is gonna be at this point. Okay. Then what we can do is we can take a look at our toes. All right, so let me zoom in over here. Um, don't look at toes, toes are weird. I'm not a fan of toes. Um, okay, so as we're moving over here, our toes are moving nicely, but what we could stand to do is perhaps shift um, where our heel is sitting, just to our foot. Go away, Siri. Uh, so that our foot actually sits or the, the stump of our leg actually sits in the shoe. And I can also then adjust where the ball of my foot is over here so that it actually rolls. Uh, okay, so we wanna go here and I just wanna then make sure to adjust that at this point, my heel is actually touching the ground. Kind of like there. Okay, and I can adjust my toes as well. Cool, so game of inches, right? We sort of just work, work, work at it until we've got it looking how we want. Um, and then we can take a look at the how the foot is responding on this leg. Um, so let's just quickly take a look here. We roll off of the toe, which is great. Uh, as our foot starts coming off the ground, however, we are going to change the toes so that they kind of point slightly down. And then thanks to the rotation, our foot's gonna come down like so. And we could probably just exaggerate that slightly more, but it's not necessary at this point. Okay, so we've effectively done our easing now. So if I sort of just extend my workspace, not that far, geez, um, extend my workspace out a little bit and see how it goes. Okay, that head needs some drastic fixing, fixing as well. So let's just quickly identify where that is happening. Okay, uh, so I have my head layer selected. I can see that I've got some frames that I did not add easing to. Uh, so that might already help. Cool. Uh, and then it would appear that our torso is also misbehaving. So let's see what we can do to fix that. Okay, uh, so already here's a, a frame that I need to apply easing to, and then I need to drag this one up, which is the sort of bottom of my torso. Um, let's grab it over here. Cool, um, and then it's extending a little bit too far over here. So let's just quickly grab 
grab that. And I can either use my hips or I can use my actual guard controller. Uh, and I can just quickly shift that. Let's use rather our actual hips. Let's grab this one and just shift the body so that it doesn't break. Okay, cool. And then I can see that my legs are kind of sticking out at the bottom. So I could go back and refine that. Uh, and then we can see that our collar is sticking out for our head here. So let's just quickly grab the bottom and let's add a keyframe uh, where we just suck that back into the head. Okay, cool. So uh, then we've got a pop on the arm, right? So these pops, there we go, keyframe that I forgot to add, those pops will signal where you need to like put focus on. Um, so there is something happening at the hip over here uh, and I'm just going to quickly try and fix that as well. See what is popping over here. Cool, so we've got this like sudden change in position. Uh, so let's just quickly find where that layer is and apply easing to it. Boom, should be as simple as that. Uh, cool, and then the knee as well. Again, using something that I missed. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got sort of our general blocking. Uh, again, something going on here, ba -ba -bum. so we can just identify as we move along. Okay, uh, so my character is now pushing and because of our keyframe motion, we can see that there's more to it than just a robotic figure moving. Um, but we do want to make sure that we do keep or jump back into the graph editor um, so that we can actually apply our correct easing. All right, so we get our timing exactly how we want it. Okay, so my very first motion, uh, normally I would start with anticipation, but I'm kind of just diving straight into it over here. Um, and I can actually just kind of click and drag uh, all of these keyframes over here. Sorry for like the jumping back and forth. Uh, and I'm just going to send them slightly further down the line. All right, so I kind of want this action to have a little bit more time to occur in. Okay, uh, and then I can focus on adjusting the keyframes as necessary. Okay, so let's give it another one, two, three, four, five frames to work in. We can shift these out. So if I take a look now, hopefully I haven't broken anything. Cool, no, that's, that's still working, great. Okay, so now I'm gonna dive into the easing and typically whatever I apply, um, my easing to I'll sort of apply to all of them um, because I kind of want my body to uh, to sort of work in tandem and it's at this point as well that I might start looking at for example uh, like my arm god controller so everything being controlled in this arm I might just quickly select those keyframes um, and then I can shift them maybe a couple of frames out and then I could do the same with my other arm. So I could grab the controller over there. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing this is perhaps just messing around with it slightly is gonna give me a chance to make some better overlapping action. Okay, so already not having everything occur at once, we do need to then adjust the timing of what's happening with that arm there. Uh, but already because it's not occurring at the same time as the torso, we can then see that it's um, taking place uh, sort of providing some nice overlapping action. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing then for this leg over here and make sure to do the same for the foot, all right? Because otherwise it's going to break. Uh, so let's just move like two frames down the line and then let's grab our pink leg. Uh, we can grab our foot controller as well and let's move that by two frames or maybe three frames see what it looks like uh, so this is just tinkering um, if you've got a strong idea of what you want to occur then you'll have a strong idea of what frames to move so this is again why your reference footage is so important okay so already just by adding a little bit of overlapping action it's looking a little bit better could still definitely be refined a lot but i think for the purposes of this tutorial rather than having it go on uh, for longer than necessary we can just leave it as is Okay, so then let's dive back into our sort of first slice of animation. So that would take place kind of over here at this point. I'll hit N for NATO, uh, and that's just going to then lock me in this slice of animation. Okay, so I'm going to dive in here, and I kind of want my character, um, and I can now just sort of like 
let's make this a little bit smaller so that we can see our timeline a little bit better. Um, so I kind of want this character to start off slow and then to like hit the imaginary object with a bit of force, right? So we remember that the peak in our graph editor is the main or the, the sort of fastest point and then the lower down we get are the slower points. So if I shift this out like so, I'm starting off slow and then I'm reaching a peak of speed and then easing into it so that I'm not coming to an abrupt halt. Okay, and typically I can then just take this like principle and apply it to everything below it. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly do that now so you don't get bored with it. Um, I would say that you could do it on multiple things at once, but like it, with After Effects, the graph editor sometimes just gets a little bit annoying when you try. So here, for example, like you don't want to adjust um, any of the keyframes that side and sometimes it does. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hit this up quickly and then I'll catch you guys on the other side and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've jumped into the other work file that um, is available in the folder that I provided you guys. Um, just to show, I, I don't really have the energy, sorry, I'm like falling ill at the moment, um, to put in the time and finessing that I would like to show you when it comes to like the actual motion. So you'll see in this file that I have gone and added a little bit of anticipation. So my character leans back. And then notice how that sort of action takes place a lot slower, right? So over more frames than the next one. And I've set the, the next keyframes up in such a way that it's occurring quite quick at the beginning, as I said. Um, and then, okay, so that's the mistake that I made in the, the sort of last part. I had sort of told you to push in the wrong direction. So, so we're pushing it so that our peak occurs sort of fast, and then he eases into that position. All right, um, and then again, this could definitely use like a lot more tweaking than it currently has, but I think it illustrates the point fairly well. So the application of easing is what we do slice by slice, easiest way to do it. Make sure that we don't have any popping, fix any popping that we find, adjust any um, keyframes to add some in-betweens to help sell an idea of more fluid motion. Um, piece by piece by piece all right then we go back we jump into the graph editor and we keep in mind the actual force that we want to apply all right so before we do the timing it would be best i suppose to then shift our keyframes up and down the timeline to make sure that we've got our overlapping action but already because of the poses and how it's moving um, it's kind of looking okay we could definitely overlap the arms a little bit and the legs maybe uh, but that is a sort of process of refinement that we can go through once we have our initial easing done. All right, so hopefully you guys sort of have a little bit of a better understanding of how this work file functions and what is expected of you. Um, I think at a core, sort of as a core principle, this is a fairly easy step. Um, from here, it's kind of just making sure that we don't get overwhelmed by the number of keyframes that we have on screen. And we make sure to remember that we just do one bite at a time, do one limb, do the next limb, do one leg, do the next leg. Um, because we've already blocked out our keyframes, it doesn't matter which we do first because we'll always end up in our correct position. Okay, so drop me a message if you guys are struggling or leave a comment below. Otherwise, uh, good luck with it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao.